as a nonprofit, you know that you should be writing newsletters, but more often than not, newsletters become just one more thing that we have to do, which leaves us rushing at the end of the month to come up with content, and you end up putting out newsletters that check a box rather than actually building relationships with your audience. And if you're going to actually put in the effort of getting newsletters out, then we should make them work for us, right? So today I wanna show you a simple formula for a newsletter strategy that will help you get organized, help you be consistent, and more importantly, it will help you build trust and relationships with those that are supporting your mission. Let's talk about it. Welcome to episode 65 of For Purpose Live, where I help you get clear, get focused, and be impactful by showing you how to step fully into that calling that you've been given without taking on that common narrative that nonprofits need to struggle. That's right, together we can get you in your sweet spot, using your strengths and your talents to serve this world and build a movement for your cause simply by living for purpose, on purpose. I'm Rebecca Britt, your host, and today we are talking about the nonprofit newsletter, okay? And I have actually created a newsletter template for you to use that we will go over. It'll keep you organized and on track with the content that you wanna deliver each month. You can go grab that free template. It's completely editable, Google Doc, at www.forpurposelive.com slash newsletter. The first thing you need to do when we're thinking about nonprofit newsletters, okay, is we, we want to be regular, right? That's why nonprofit newsletters can be so helpful is if you can regularly talk to your audience, right? The people on your newsletter, which if you haven't started getting a new nonprofit newsletter list, you need to, and I've done an episode on that, I will link it, but you need to develop your list. Every time you're going out, every time somebody's uh, interested in your cause, you're doing an event, gather emails because these are people that are interested in your cause and they will want to know what you're doing. And then when you have times where you can ask for donations or ask for mentors or volunteers, they are likely to be ones that will take you up on that, right? So you want to be developing your email list and then you want to be actually contacting these people often, right? And uh, consistently. And the type of communication you do to these people needs to be something that they can rely on. They understand, okay, this person has their stuff together, they're running a nonprofit, I should trust them to run this nonprofit, I should be understanding what they're doing, how they're being impactful, how they're using money that they're taking in, and they can get more and more heart for your mission as you feed them the narrative of what you do and why it's important. So you want to be regularly engaging these people, but a lot of times we start with a newsletter, we say we're gonna do it weekly or monthly, and then it ends up we don't get it done, it ends up being inconsistent, what we put in it is inconsistent, it is kind of an afterthought. And when relationships are afterthoughts, people feel that, and then if you're just reaching out to donors or some of your audience members, you know, once or twice a year when like, hey, we have a big event and we want you to come, uh, you know, give money or come to our gala, then it's like, well, you haven't nurtured our relationship all year. So newsletters are so awesome because they nurture that relationship all year, but it's not individual touch points. You're not having to call these people or talk to them individually, right? You write out really good content for everyone and everyone gets it so that they can opt in to being engaged in your mission on the level that suits them, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is determine your schedule. And I can't stress this enough, but make it sustainable, okay? So a lot of nonprofits wanna do weekly newsletters, but then they end up skipping a couple weeks. It is much better to just do a monthly or even quarterly newsletter if you can commit to that. Whatever you choose, make sure it's sustainable and make sure that you're able to do it and it's not an afterthought. So whatever your schedule is, if it's going to be monthly, great. The template that I'm gonna share with you is good to be used for a monthly template, but you can also do it quarterly. So determine your schedule. What are you going to commit to? And when you create your strategic plan, determine some KPIs around this. So you can say, we are going to send four newsletters a year. We are going to send 12 newsletters a year. So that's a KPI, an internal performance metric that you can track to make sure that you're actually doing it to hold yourself accountable. Then you want to determine your content calendar. I'm not gonna go through this a lot because I have a whole nother video on this, which I will link, 
but you want to understand what content will you have. And you can do this real quick in a brainstorming session so that every month you're not sitting there going, what should we talk about? Okay, some months you'll have very clear things, open enrollment, or maybe it's an awareness month for your cause. So you're totally know what you're going to talk about that month. But there's other months that are kind of lulls and it's just mission as usual, just still doing the same thing. So it's good to have 12 months worth of content mapped out. And in the, uh, at forpurposelive.com slash calendar, you can get a, an editable template for you to map out your calendar. Again, I'll link that video. But you can come up with, if your cause is about, you know, uh, foster care, I always talk about foster care. So you could do, um, fill in the months that are like foster care awareness months. But in one month, you could do uh, what it's like for a foster child, why mentorship's important. Another uh, one you could do is a specific foster kid story. Another thing you could do is why you care about relationship-based interaction. Another thing, just whatever is about your mission, what you care about, break that into months, into themes. And I, you know, you can come up with 12 things that you care about. Um, what's the problem? Why are you the solution? What are really intricate, unique things that you do that you have an opinion about that you can feed out? And those are going to be your themes for the month. So get 12 ready so that when you go to build your content, you at least understand your theme. This can also help your social media person. And if you have some blanket themes for specific months, people will not remember in January next year what you did January last year. Just reuse what you did last year. People should hear the same thing from you over and over and over again. Your The problem often doesn't change, and if it does, hallelujah. But the problem's still there, you're still the solution. They don't wanna see that your solution changes every month and that you have a new evidence-based thing and maybe you could tackle it this way and maybe you could, no, they want to know, here's the solution, this is what we're doing here, we've been doing it every year, we continue to get good results and this is what we need to keep implementing and keep showing them why you are the solution. So if you have the same content each year, even better, okay? So map out your content calendar. What's your theme for each month? What could you talk about? What's your problem? What's your solution? Now you wanna create a template. So this is where the template I've created for you comes in, forpurposelive.com slash newsletter. And in this template, you have a um, traditional newsletter and you also have a conversational newsletter. So what I like to do for my Stable Moments program is halfway through the month, I do a traditional newsletter. We're gonna go through that, what that looks like. And then at the end of the month, I do a conversational newsletter. So basically one is talking about um, highlights of the program, mentor spotlights, uh, product promotion, things that we found, trainings that are on our radar, some of that stuff. The second e-news or uh, newsletter I do is Hey Sally, I know that you care about this cause and this is something, this is my opinion on this theme this month. Here's a resource I have about it. Short, sweet, but more building the relationship. So often people just do the newsletters that are like those dra drag and drop newsletters um, with the different contents, but they're not very conversational. And then people don't get to know your heart that much. So I really like to build relationship with the people on your list. I really like having a conversational one and a, tradi a traditional one. I love the traditional ones because they allow you to really highlight different things that are going on in your program, show that you're a leader, show that you have your pulse on what's happening in your causes industry. Um, and so on that uh, newsletter template that I give you, the beginning just is an introduction to the theme of the month. So what's your theme for the month? Hey, May is foster care awareness month. Hey, this month we are highlighting mentorship. Okay, and you just say why it's important. A very quick intro sentence or two. Then I usually highlight a blog post. So if you're already building out theme content for social media and for newsletters, you might as well have a blog post on it. Maximize everything. It's the same theme across all of your media, okay? So I do a little bit about that theme and I do a blog post for that theme. 
every year you can just do change the content a little bit. It's the same message, right? But maybe you're coming at it with a different story or a different angle. So the first thing I have is that introductory, um, hey, this is the theme for the month. Then I do an, a blog. Then I have several different sections that I could add in. Some things might be like on our radar. You might want to promote a training that's happening, a free training. Maybe you'll, you see um, a partner or another organization that's offering something that could be helpful. I also have a section for our latest finds. So I'm showing that I am in, you know, in this world and I am finding resources for people to use. So I'm actually being helpful to them and they're not just my resources, they're other resources. So I list out other resources. This could be videos, blogs, articles I'm finding. Now, I don't like spend a whole bunch of time going out and seeing what's in the world of childhood trauma and figuring, no, I have Google Alerts set up. So just set up Google Alerts for yourself for keywords about your industry or about your cause. And Google just feeds you things that are going on. And if they are relevant, um, if they are true to your cause and true to your values, then you can share them. You don't just wanna start sharing things to show that you know the most. And I'll give you an example. With Stable Moments, I try to show everybody that they can play an active role in the life of a child. And I try to um, not be super clinical. I try to show everyone that like, you don't need to have your master's degree in social work to play a role. So when I get uh, research about childhood trauma and uh, you know neurology and how trauma impacts the brain. I actually don't put those in our latest finds or resources for mentors because the last thing I want to do is overwhelm them with the clinical side of things or with research. But if my audience was for you know uh, neurological research, then I would do that. So you really want to think about your audience and what's going to be useful th to them, not what shows them that I'm so smart or that I have my pulse on the trigger, but what really would they find useful? So I find like Sesame Street explainer videos and um, training, basic trainings out there. And those are the things that I share. I also show uh, our platform on social media. So your nonprofit on social media. And I use a screenshot of the uh a post that got a lot of engagement and I say click here to join the conversation. This grows your social media, lets people know we are on social media, you should join us. If you do a give section in this monthly newsletter, then you can write support our cause. I invite you to change this up. So rather than just having like so many nonprofits just have a give or a support our cause block in their newsletter and it never changes. I invite you to change this every month or often as you have new needs that come up. If you're doing a supply drive, if you're saying support this specific program, if you're saying um, do a scholarship, show people every month or every quarter that you're sending this out the different ways which they can engage and the different ways their dollars are being used. Nobody wants to see give or support or make a donation today. We all knew that was an option. I want to see like if we're doing a supply drive because we're starting a new program and I can go on Amazon and I can buy things for your nonprofit today, that feels really practical, tangible, personal, right? So think about how are you switching up your giving message to show people all the different ways that they can support your mission. You'll also see in that template that I have a, a sign off from uh, myself. So you can put your image in and you can say, you know, this month's newsletter was curated by and then do your name or the executive director, um, follow this executive director on LinkedIn. Again, it just shows that you have credibility, that you are in the world talking about your cause um, and it allows people to follow you and continue that relationship on other platforms. OK, so take the template that I've created and make it your own. If our latest finds, if that's like, no, I'm not going to look up other things and share them out, take that out of the template. Figure out what do you want to share once a month 
and create a template that you pretty much stick to every single month so that or every single quarter so that when people get your newsletter they're like they start relying on what's on your radar or what's your monthly blog or what's your uh, mentor or your member spotlight okay what's events do you have coming up whatever it is that you put in there that speaks to your nonprofit and what you do try to stick to that template now you'll also see in that template that I have the the um, conversational template. So this is the one where I just talk about the theme and my opinion on it um, so that people can start to believe and build trust and know that I care that they know this is much more conversational. Hey Larry, I know that you support this cause. I wanted to let you know about um, something that's going on. I'm thrilled to uh, let you know about this. I wanted to thank you for this. I can't believe we're still seeing this problem. Here's the solution. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for caring. Just a real conversational one. Now I've added some ChatGPT prompts in there. So if you want to ask ChatGPT, you can just say, write a conversational email to supporters of a nonprofit that um, serves adults in transition um, about the problem adults in transition are facing and how this nonprofit is the solution. Like you can literally just write that and you can take that template and copy and paste some of the things that I've already written in there, put it in ChatGPT, it'll write a conversational email for you and load that in. I do want you to make sure it matches your tone, okay? So if you are, sometimes I tell ChatGPT, be more direct, be less flowery, because I'm pretty direct and I'm less flowery. Then I say, be fun. Oh, don't be that, don't be that fun. Too many exclamation points there. So make sure it starts matching your tone and how you would speak to people so people get a relationship with you, okay? You want to show up as you um, and you want people to support you and as much as you're like it's not about me i want them to support the mission yeah i get it but all giving is done through relationships and they want to trust you people will give money to you and what you believe in if they trust you more than they will a cause or a nonprofit. so you do need to build your relationships with people and the trust that they have that you will get things done and once they trust you if they say, hey, I want to, if you say, I want to launch this new program and it's good for these reasons, they're like, you don't even need to tell me. I trust you. Your heart's there. You've built the credibility. You've been emailing me for months. Um, I get your opinion. I stand with you here. Here's the support. Okay. Okay. So that's your template. Create your template. If you're going to uh, do once a month or once a quarter, great. And then have a template that you're going to follow every single month. The template that I give you says make a copy. It's not for you to make a copy for my sake. It's for you to make a copy every single month. So you would make a copy and then you would change the title. March 2024 newsletter, whatever. December 2025 newsletter. Make a new copy every month so that you are keeping yourself organized. You can write these out um, throughout the month or even a couple months in advance and have them scheduled, okay? Now I want you to create a workflow just because you create a template does not mean that it is in your workflow. And if you have a team, an intern, a communications person, a social media person, an admin assistant, somebody that a volunteer that might help you with this, then a workflow keeps you organized. So the workflow should say, when, by when are you creating this new template document for the month? Maybe by the first of the month, you're gonna create your new template document. Then you're gonna start filling it in a week before uh, the newsletter goes out, somebody on the team has added all the content, either you or somebody else, maybe somebody on the team has reviewed it, whatever you want for your work workflow to be. Maybe it's added into your scheduler, your email scheduler a week prior, whatever the workflow is, so that you can keep yourself accountable to this workflow. And then when you're having marketing discussions, maybe you have marketing discussions once a month, or maybe at board meetings you talk about it, and this is something that you can look at and say, are we following this workflow? I am for creating workflows for all of your processes and having a workflow tracker in like a Google Sheet because what that does is if you open your workflow tracker once a month, 
uh, or once a quarter, you can see like, oh my gosh, we created that newsletter workflow and we haven't been doing that or whatever. And it holds you accountable to it because we all know templates are great, plans are great, but unless there is an actual practice that you are getting yourself in the habit in, it just ain't gonna happen. And it will be last minute. So what, whatever works for you. I sometimes create blocks in my calendar that's like every, uh, you know, the 14th and the 30th, you are working on your e-news that you're sending out, okay? Create a workflow that you're gonna hold yourself accountable to. And then finally, you are going to be regular and execute. So start sending these out. It should be the exact same time every month. So if you're gonna do halfway through the month and then like I do halfway through for the normal one and then at the end of the month, I do the conversational one, be regular every month, execute, develop a KPI that's saying we're getting out one a month that you can report back to the board. Did you do the newsletter that you were supposed to do? If not, why? what's the feedback you're getting from them? Ask a few people, have you been enjoying our newsletter? See if there's other metrics you can track, like uh, your click-through rate, your open rate, your donations that are coming through, your signups. Are things improving because you are communicating to your audience? You have a captive audience. You have an audience that wants to listen to you about your mission and your cause they have opted in so you need to feed them what's important and why they should care and you should do that regularly whether it's monthly or quarterly uh, make sure it's sustainable for you and then get a template going and do it regularly okay so you want to determine your schedule what works for you create a content calendar for those four newsletters a year or those 12 newsletters a year what are your themes going to be make it something that's easy something that you care about something you're opinionated about that you can totally if i had you in a room you could tell tell me all about it okay create your template use the template that i've given you don't forget to grab that for purposelive.com newsletter and make it your own so that every month you are just making a copy and filling it in create a workflow that works for you, actually write out the process that you're going to do each month. Where are you keeping the template? Who's doing this template? When are you executing on it to keep yourself accountable? And then be regular and execute and be able to be proud at the end of the year when you're like, we actually hit all of our newsletters. They all went out. I wasn't rushed and nervous of like, what are we gonna include in them? Because I had a template, I got ahead of it, and now we are cultivating relationships. I know people have heard from us and understood what we're doing this year, okay? Doesn't need to be difficult or something that you rush into. You just need to do a little bit of pre-planning on the front end. I hope the template helps you. Please give me a comment, subscribe, like, and thank you so much for your service to this world. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.